Top 5 Cryptids of Illinois Number 5. The Big Muddy Monster The Big Muddy Monster is an intriguing entity that has become an integral part of the folklore of the state of Illinois. This creature, often compared to Bigfoot, and indeed I personally think it probably is an albino Bigfoot, has been the subject of countless accounts, speculations, and investigations. As we look into the story of the Big Muddy Monster, we will explore its origins, various sightings, its cultural impact, and the ongoing debates surrounding its existence. The legend of the Big Muddy Monster originated in the own of Murfreesboro, Illinois. The creature takes its name from the Big Muddy River that flows near the town. The first reported sightings of the creature came about in the summer of 1973, when local residents began reporting encounters with an enormous, hair-covered beast with a terrifyingly foul stench. These accounts, described the creature as standing over seven feet tall, with muddy, white hair and a lumbering gait. The first documented encounter took place on June 25, 1973, when a young couple parked their car near a boat ramp along the Big Muddy River in Murfreesboro. They heard a loud scream and saw a huge, hairy creature covered in mud approaching them. They described it as about seven feet tall, with white hair and glowing pink eyes. They quickly drove away and reported the incident to the police. The officers who investigated the scene found large footprints and a foul odor, but no sign of the monster. On July 7, 1973, Two teenagers were having a picnic near the same boat ramp when they heard a rustling in the bushes. They spotted a similar creature as the one seen by the couple, only this time it had dark brown hair and red eyes. It also had long arms and a barrel-shaped chest. The teens ran to their car and drove to the police station. The police returned to the site with a trained sniffer dog, but the dog refused to follow the trail of the monster. The police also noticed that the creature had left behind a slime-like substance on the ground. Following these first encounters, several other sightings were reported in quick succession throughout the summer. The accounts were strikingly consistent, with individuals independently describing a similar creature with the same distinctive smell. The local police department, led by then-Chief Toby Berger, launched an investigation into these sightings but was unable to determine the creature's identity or origin. The Big Muddy Monster quickly became a local legend in Murfreesboro and the surrounding areas. The creature was incorporated into local folklore and became a popular subject for local storytellers and enthusiasts of the paranormal. The town now hosts an annual Big Muddy Monster Brew Festival, where attendees enjoy local craft beers and share stories about the creature. Additionally, the monster has been the subject of several documentaries and has been featured in various books on cryptids and folklore. Despite the flurry of sightings during the summer of 73, no solid evidence of the Big Muddy Monster's existence has ever been found. Those of us who have seen a Bigfoot could care less about the speculation though. Skeptics argue that the sightings were the result of mass hysteria or misidentifications of known animals such as bears or large dogs that walk upright on account of them needing to take a long, pointy and painful poop. Some have even suggested that the entire affair was a hoax, orchestrated for publicity or amusement. It's silly how far some people, barring the wilderness of course, will go to explain away these creatures. However, believers point to the consistency of the reports and the genuine fear expressed by those who claim to have seen the creature. 
They also point out that large, unknown creatures have been discovered in the past, suggesting the possibility that an undiscovered species could exist in the remote areas around the Big Muddy River. The mystery of the Big Muddy Monster has also attracted the attention of cryptozoologists, who study creatures whose existence is disputed or unsubstantiated. Some cryptozoologists suggest that the Big Muddy Monster could be a type of sack squash, a creature from North American folklore that is said to inhabit forests, and not just in the Pacific Northwest. The tale of the Big Muddy Monster is a fascinating chapter in the folklore of Illinois. While the truth of the creature's existence remains shrouded in mystery, the story continues to captivate both locals and outsiders. Whether it was a genuine cryptid, which I'm certain it was, the legend of the Big Muddy Monster serves as a powerful reminder of the enduring appeal of the unknown and the unexplained in our culture. Number 4. Streeter Hobbit The Streeter Hobbit, fondly referred to as the Hobbit of Streeter, is a staple character in the folklore of Streeter, Illinois. This curious entity has been the subject of countless discussions, debates, and even academic studies. Its origins are rooted deeply in the local culture, and its legend continues to influence the community's imagination. The origins of the Streeter Hobbit are shrouded in mystery, with various legends and theories attempting to explain its inception. Some attribute its existence to the imaginative minds of the early settlers, while others believe it is a manifestation of the town's collective consciousness. Nonetheless, the most widely accepted theory is that the Hobbit is a symbol of the town's historical connection with coal mining. Streeter's history significantly revolves around coal mining, which was the town's economic backbone during the late 19th and 20th centuries. The Streeter Hobbit is often depicted as a diminutive creature, living underground in the coal mines. Some believe this representation could symbolize the miners' lives, characterized by long hours in the dark, cramped mines. In local folklore, the Streeter Hobbit is depicted as a small, elusive creature with a penchant for mischief. Stories often describe encounters with the Hobbit, where it plays harmless pranks on the townsfolk, only to disappear into the depths of the mines. The Hobbit's actions, while often mischievous, never cause harm, leading to its endearing reputation among the locals. The Streeter Hobbit is also associated with good luck. Many miners would carry small tokens or symbols of the Hobbit as charms, believing it would protect them from harm and bring good fortune. This belief further ingrained the Hobbit into the local culture, transforming it from a mere folklore character into a symbol of the town's identity. Although it's been thought of as a mere tale, there have been sightings of it over the years. Here are a couple recent ones. In 2019, a group of disc golfers at Marilla Park claimed to have seen a small humanoid creature with hairy feet and pointed ears hiding behind a tree. They said the creature was about three feet tall and had a green cloak. They tried to approach it, but it ran away into the woods. They described it as looking like a hobbit from the Lord of the Rings movies. In 2020, a couple who were canoeing on the Vermilion River near the Spring Lake Nature Area reported seeing a similar creature on the riverbank. They said it was fishing with a stick and had a basket full of fish. They said it looked at them curiously and waved before disappearing into the bushes. They also said it had a hobbit-like appearance and wore a brown hat. The Streeter Hobbit's influence extends beyond the town's folklore. 
it has become a symbol of Streeter's resilience and spirit. The Hobbit's diminutive stature and underground dwelling reflect the hardships faced by the early miners, while its mischievous nature represents their indomitable spirit. The Hobbit's enduring popularity can be seen as a testament to the town's ability to embrace its history and turn it into a source of pride. Academically, the Streeter Hobbit offers intriguing insights into the anthropological and sociological aspects of folklore. Scholars view the Hobbit as a product of societal imagination, shaped by historical and cultural influences. Its evolution over time reflects changes in societal values and attitudes, providing a unique lens to examine the town's history. Today, the Streeter Hobbit continues to be a cherished part of the town's identity. Modern interpretations often emphasize its protective role, symbolizing the town's resilience and unity. The Hobbit's enduring legacy is a testament to the power of folklore in shaping community identity and preserving cultural heritage. In conclusion, the Streeter Hobbit is much more than a character in local folklore. It is a reflection of the town's history, a symbol of resilience, and a beacon of its cultural identity. Its legend continues to captivate the imagination of locals and visitors, ensuring its place in the annals of Streeter's rich heritage. Through careful preservation and celebratory traditions, the Streeter Hobbit remains a vibrant thread in the intricate mosaic of the town's shared storyline, reminding us of the profound power of folklore in binding communities together. Number 3. The Enfield Horror The Enfield Horror, a creature reported to have terrorized the residents of Enfield, Illinois during the 1970s, remains one of the most intriguing mysteries in the realm of cryptozoology. While the creature's existence has been hotly debated, the fear and fascination it stirred among the local population and beyond are indisputable. The story of the Enfield Horror first surfaced on April 25, 1973, when a local resident, Henry McDaniel, reported that a bizarre creature had attempted to break into his home. McDaniel described the creature as having three legs, two short arms, pink eyes as large as flashlights, and standing almost five feet tall. The creature was said to have moved in a peculiar hopping manner and emitted a shrill sound. McDaniel wasn't the only one to report an encounter. Other locals, including children, claimed to have seen the creature. The reports were similar, reinforcing the image of a three-legged beast with glowing eyes. The encounters sparked a media frenzy, attracting attention from both local and national news outlets. The creature was dubbed the Enfield Horror, after the small southern Illinois town where it was sighted. The first and most detailed account came from McDaniel himself. He reported that his children had first heard a scratching at the door, which he initially dismissed as a stray dog or cat. When he opened the door, he came face to face with the creature. McDaniel fired four shots at it, hitting it once. However, the creature simply hissed and bounded away, covering approximately 50 feet in three leaps. In another incident, a group of five children and one adult claimed to have seen the creature in a nearby field. They described it similarly to McDaniel's account, further solidifying the image of the Enfield Horror. The local police investigated McDaniel's claims but found only dog-like prints in the mud around his house. The prints, however, were noted to be six-toed, which added to the mystery. The police also noted scratch marks on the door that were too high up to be made by a dog or other common animal. 
several cryptozoologists and paranormal investigators, including Loren Coleman, descended on Enfield to investigate the sightings. The investigations yielded no solid evidence of the creature's existence, but they did reveal a deep-seated fear among the residents. As with any unexplained phenomenon, theories about the Enfield horror abound. Some locals believe that the creature was a misidentified animal, possibly a kangaroo that had escaped from a local zoo. This theory is supported by McDaniel's description of the creature's hopping movement and its size. However, it doesn't explain the three-leggedness, glowing eyes, and six-toed prints. Another theory suggests that the Enfield horror was a case of mass hysteria fueled by media attention. This theory posits that the children who reported seeing the creature were influenced by McDaniel's account and the ensuing media frenzy. Personally, I think that theory sounds like a bunch of gobbledygook. On the fringe, some believe that the Enfield horror was an extraterrestrial being. This theory is bolstered by the creature's unusual features and a reported increase in UFO sightings around the same time. I'd probably lean towards it being an escaped alien's pet myself. That or a horribly inbred abomination of nature. The Enfield horror remains a mystery, its true nature as elusive as the creature itself. Whether it was a misidentified animal, a product of mass hysteria, or something more extraordinary, it has left an indelible mark on the community of Enfield and the field of cryptozoology. It serves as a reminder of the unexplained mysteries that continue to captivate us, fueling our quest for knowledge and understanding of the world around us. Number 2. Chicago Mothman The Chicago Mothman is a mysterious entity that has intrigued and bewildered residents of Illinois for years. With its origins shrouded in mystery, the creature is closely associated with the folklore of the Mothman of Point Pleasant, and for good reason due to them likely being the same species of cryptid. The Chicago Mothman sightings, however, have been notably prevalent in recent years, sparking debates about its existence, nature, and potential implications. The Mothman, as a concept, first emerged in the late 1960s in West Virginia, where multiple sightings of a humanoid creature with glowing red eyes and large wings were reported. The creature was subsequently linked to the collapse of the Silver Bridge, leading to widespread fear and speculation. The story was later popularized by John Keel's 1975 book, The Mothman Prophecies, in the 2002 film adaptation of the same name. The Chicago Mothman, however, has its own unique narrative. The first reported sighting in Chicago occurred in 2011, but the frequency of reports increased significantly in 2017. To date, over 100 sightings have been documented, primarily around the lakefront area in Chicago, leading to a renewed interest in this elusive creature. Witness accounts of the Mothman in Chicago vary, but certain characteristics are consistent. The creature is typically described as a large, flying humanoid, standing between 6 to 10 feet tall. Its most notable features are its glowing red eyes and large, bat-like wings that span anywhere from 10 to 15 feet. Some reports also describe the creature as having a slim, humanoid shape, while others liken it to a large, dark bird or owl. Here are a couple recent notable sightings. On July 22, 2021, around 11, 15 p.m., a security officer at O'Hare International Airport saw a large wing being flying near the United Airlines cargo area. 
he described it as having a wingspan of at least 10 feet, a humanoid body, and glowing red eyes. He said it flew with a fluid motion and made no sound. He felt a sense of dread and fear as he watched it. He contacted Lon Strickler, a well-known cryptid and paranormal researcher who has been documenting the Chicago Mothman sightings, and gave him his account. Strickler later interviewed two other witnesses who saw the same creature that night, one of them a truck driver who said it landed on his vehicle and stared at him through the windshield. Strickler believes this incident is connected to a series of sightings that have been occurring at O'Hare since 2017. On June 3rd of 2021, around 10 p.m., three friends were walking on a lakefront trail behind Shedd Aquarium in Chicago when they noticed someone standing by the railing. They thought it was a person until they got closer and saw that it had large wings folded behind its back a slender torso, and a small head with glowing red eyes. They said it was about six feet tall and dark gray in color. They felt paralyzed as they locked eyes with it, and then it suddenly spread its wings and flew away over Lake Michigan. They ran away from the scene and later also reported their encounter to Lon Strickler, who added it to his database of Chicago Mothman sightings. He said this was one of the few sightings where the creature was seen standing on the ground. Theories about the Chicago Mothman range from the scientifically plausible to the wildly speculative. Some suggest it could be a misidentified large bird species like a sandhill crane or great horned owl. However, the sheer size reported and the humanoid features challenge this interpretation. Others propose the Mothman as an interdimensional being, slipping in and out of our reality. This theory is often supported by the creature's sudden appearances and disappearances. The psychological perspective posits the sightings as mass hysteria or periidolia, a phenomenon where the brain perceives a known image or sound where none exists. This theory argues that cultural knowledge of the Mothman myth might influence people to interpret ambiguous stimuli as the creature. Personally I think that's a little too convenient an explanation for most of these sightings. The Chicago Mothman has had a significant impact on local culture. It has inspired numerous works of art, literature, and film contributing to the city's rich assortment of urban legends and folklore. Despite the fear it instills in some, the creature has also brought together a community of enthusiasts, researchers, and storytellers, all fascinated by the unknown. The Chicago Mothman remains one of the most captivating mysteries of Illinois. Its elusive nature and the very testimonies contribute to its mystique, making it a subject of continuous study and debate. Whether believed to be real or imagined, the Mothman of Chicago serves as a reminder of the profound impact a large turd flying through the air at high speeds at night can make on the human face. Until definitive proof emerges, the creature will continue to flutter in the twilight zone of fact and fiction a symbol of the city's enduring allure for the mysterious. Number 1. The Dogman Illinois, steeped in rich history and folklore, is home to incredible tales of paranormal activity and supernatural occurrences. Among these is the mysterious entity known as the Dogman. This creature, reputed to possess a blend of both human and canine characteristics, has been a part of Illinois' folklore for generations. The origins of the Dogmen of Illinois are deeply rooted in Native American folklore. The indigenous tribes in TH region narrated tales of man-beasts, often referred to as skinwalkers. These creatures were believed to have the ability to shapeshift into animals, 
one of the most common being a wolf-like creature. European settlers perpetuated these stories, with the first recorded mention of the dogman appearing in the late 18th century. The dogman phenomenon gained traction in the 20th century with the advent of media. Eyewitness accounts describe the creature as a bipedal being, standing at seven feet tall, with a muscular body, a dog-like face, and glowing red or amber eyes. A couple of the most notable sightings in Illinois include the McWhorter Werewolf and the Mepin Werewolf Encounter in 1944. These sightings, often accompanied by eerie howls and large canine footprints, have fueled fear, fascination, and skepticism in equal measure. Here are a couple recent sightings. On October 30, 2020, a man in Woodford County, Illinois reported seeing a large, wolf-like creature standing on two legs near his property. He said the creature was about seven feet tall, had dark brown fur, a long snout, pointed ears, and glowing yellow eyes. He said the creature stared at him for a few seconds before running away into the woods. He also noticed a foul smell in the air and heard a loud howl shortly after. He contacted Dogman Encounters website to share his story. On August 15, 2015, a couple in Fox Lake, Illinois reported being chased by a dogman-like creature while driving home from their parents' house. Oh geez, it makes it sound like they are siblings, moving on. They said the creature ran in front of their car, causing them to swerve and almost crash. They described the creature as having a muscular body, long arms, clawed hands, a bushy tail, and a wolf-like head. They said the creature had black fur and red eyes. The creature followed them for several miles, running alongside their car and trying to attack them. They managed to escape by speeding up and reaching a more populated area. They contacted the Cloaked Hedgehog YouTube channel to hear their story. The dogman's significance in Illinois extends beyond mere sightings. It has become a cultural symbol, featuring prominently in local folklore, media, literature, and even tourism. Local authors and filmmakers have woven tales around this mystifying creature, enhancing its legendary status. Many local festivals and events also incorporate dogman-themed attractions, demonstrating the creature's entrenched position in Illinois' cultural identity. From a scientific standpoint, the existence of the dogman is highly contested. Most scientists and experts attribute sightings to misidentification of common wildlife such as bears, wolves, or large dogs that all quite obviously need to take long, painful and pointy poops. Others suggest the phenomenon is a result of mass hysteria or fabricated stories for attention or entertainment. I think these people should try a little good old-fashioned field investigation in known hotspots. Despite the skepticism, the lack of undisputable evidence does not deter believers and cryptozoologists who continue to search for proof of the dogman's existence. The dogman phenomenon in Illinois is a fascinating blend of folklore, eyewitness reports, cultural significance, and scientific skepticism. While the existence of the dogman remains unproven, the entity continues to captivate the imagination of locals and visitors alike. Whether it is a misunderstood animal, a figure born out of mass hysteria, which is silly to believe, or a genuine cryptid, the dogman phenomenon is an enduring aspect of Illinois' cultural wealth. It is a reminder of humanity's universal fascination with the unknown and the unexplainable, a fascination that transcends logic and reason. The Dogman of Illinois, much like the state itself, is a testament to the power of storytelling and belief. 
It emphasizes the inherent human need to explore and, occasionally, to fear the mysterious entities that likely lurk at the edges of our known world. Regardless of its true nature, the dogman's tale is interwoven into the fabric of Illinois, becoming as much a part of the state's identity as its rich history and diverse culture. Thank you for watching my friends, it truly means a lot to me. Until next time, take care of yourselves out there.